and it went up again today. I mean, <laughs> remember, I, 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 on your show, I said, I'm buying Tesla stock. I mean, this stuff is going to go to the moon. And, and somebody asked, I, I can't remember who, but that was the old stock. How far do you think it's going? Oh, two grand. It's going to go to a two grand a share. <laughs> and then they cut it in. I made so much. I mean, it's, I cannot begin to tell you how much money I have made on Tesla stock. So lots of things that, uh, you know, were very powerful at one time. Uh, empires, car companies, they vanished um, overnight. Things can happen quickly um, if you're not, if you don't have a backup plan. I think that Tesla may get into the market of just manufacturing a skateboard. Uh, and you do what you want, like Ford and General Motors and whatever. They do the same thing with big trucks. Hey, I'm Steven, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, I'm reacting to some comments from the automotive expert of experts, Sandy Munro, who recently did a podcast with the Autoline Network, link in description to the full interview, highly recommend you guys watch it, sharing his thoughts on Tesla, their engineering lead, and how legacy automakers stand any chance whatsoever of catching up to Tesla, or even staying in business toward the end of this decade. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with, at minimum, $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. If it isn't uh, propelled by um, electricity, you're going to have a problem. And yeah, by the way, have a problem in the winter time if you lose 50% of your range. Well, I'm going to check that out, but um, I'm I'm getting responses from people uh, that uh, that already have a Model 3 and already did some cold weather testing. And I don't want to say it because you're going to go crazy and say that's impossible. And that's kind of like what I said when I saw the uh, when I, when I looked at the, uh, the the data and whatnot that they sent me, I said, you're out of your mind, you're lying, whatever. I didn't tell them that. I, I said, well, thank you very much. But uh, but at the end of the day, um, I, I don't believe what I'm looking at right now. But when I get done, we should probably have another chat. Um, I so want to find out. What's the data that they're sending you? It's a lot less than, uh, than 40 or 50% or 30% even. I, I'm, I'm looking at teens. And if that's the case, if this is really and truly true. <sighs> <laughs> so a lot just happened there. Sandy Munro had been discussing that he plans to take out Tesla's brand new 2021 Model 3, which now features the same heat pump originally developed for the Model Y, which allowed the Model Y to get a comparable range to the Model 3 despite being 10% more massive, which is huge. If you understand engineering, you'll know why. And Sandy is saying that some of his fans and followers have actually been doing their own cold weather testing in these new 2021 Model 3s and discovering that the range reduction is far less than you'd expect. Sandy's sort of suggesting there that if this is true, other automakers can kiss their ass goodbye. While cold Cold weather range reduction on electric vehicles doesn't affect too many consumers enormously. There's plenty of people out there that it will impact. If Tesla can solve this issue as well, it is game over. Sandy, what's, what's your sense of how the traditional automotive manufacturers are doing in light of all of this, whether it's three-wheeled three, three vehicles or what Tesla's been up to or what you're seeing in other <laughs> industries? I mean, how are they doing? Well, you know, if this wasn't a family show, I'd just take <laughs> off my pants. And then I would say they're caught with their pants down. What do you think? <laughs> I think uh, I think that they hired a lot of really expensive consultants who told them, don't worry, ICE is here forever. And I remember sitting in a conference, another conference, and people were saying um, that uh, we'll only see about 10% um, we'll only see about 10% of the, uh, the market being EV in 2045. Guy was a genius. He was being paid tons of money. Everybody applauded wildly. And I'm sitting there thinking, 
should I should I say I think it should be a crossover, fifty percent in twenty th sorry twenty thirty five or twenty thirty? Mm, I can't think. And this guy is saying ten percent. Oh boy! Oh, that's my guy. I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, okay, all this stuff. Um, but really and truly, um, I think they got caught with their pants down, and that's why GM and LG are, are having a big deal. Um, I thought we were going to talk about uh, VTOLs. I talked about that before. I think that that and the three-wheel vehicle are the two things I'd be hanging my hat on. Um, I, 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 heard, I heard lots of stuff. I, I, the thing that really surprised me the most was when, was when um, uh, Ford said, okay, we're in with Rivian. Uh, but we're not going to do anything. I I was <laughs> dumbfounded. Uh, I would have just taken the F one hundred and fifty chassis or body and stuck it on top of a Rivian and called it a day. But it didn't happen. I still think that they uh, they there's a lot of people. I think at uh, very lofty places um, that um, uh, you know the good times are coming back. The good old days. Well, uh, I'm not into that. Uh, at all. It's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult for me to look backwards and say that's the future. Uh, I can't do it. Some interesting thoughts here from Sandy. I actually think he's probably got a fair point. If Ford had have actually just dropped the body of the F-150 onto the Rivian skateboard, they probably could have saved themselves a couple of years in coming to market with an electrified F-150. And as we know, having a first mover advantage is probably helpful, especially given the fact that the Cybertruck is just around the corner and it's going to begin eating the lunch of Ford, GM and everyone else making pickup trucks in the United States. Who knows, maybe this is how things play out. Maybe Ford's just wanting to see the technology prove itself a little bit more and then they'll be ready to start rolling out F-150s based on Rivian's hardware. In either case though, Ford are way behind the eight ball and should be moving as fast as they possibly can, doing whatever they possibly can to get an electric F-150 on the market as fast as they possibly can. So, so you're not at all encouraged about what General Motors has been saying about, you know, the Altium battery and the Lyric and the Celestique and the electric Hummer and Ford with the Mach-E and the forthcoming um, E-Transit van and... Yeah the electric F-150, that, that doesn't say to you they're getting it finally? Marketing is. I think marketing is doing a fine job. Oh, Sandy Monroe, what a savage. If you don't get it, I'm not going to explain that one. And I don't think it's because GM can't do it. I just think they sat on their hands too long. And I, I'm, I'm positive. I mean, a long time ago, um, I think Gary will remember, um, I, was, uh, I was at a... I was in uh, Traverse City and um, and some other reporter came up and interviewed me after GM had uh, <coughs> had made a speech about how they were going to turn quickly and whatnot. And um, and this guy turned around and said, uh, Mr. Winters, I think it was. Anyways, um, <laughs> he turned around and said, uh, Sandy, what do you think? And I said, it's hard to make an elephant tap dance. Or let's see the elephant tap dance. And um, uh, and that is the truth. Uh, elephants are hard to tap dance. But if they get running at you, they can outrun you. And when they step on you, you're going to be about this thick. That's it. Uh, so I know that they can do the job. I just don't think they've been doing the job that they should have been doing 10 years ago. So what do they need to do? Well, they can do some of that stuff organically but they really need to start buying into uh, buying people. And uh, that's, what, that's what I think is gonna happen. Just like you were talking about Calvinator and Nash and all these, same thing is gonna happen. Some of these smaller car companies are gonna be just too appealing for words. They'll snap them up, suck up the technology and, uh, and go into business doing whatever, whatever business that they wanna get into. That's the only way I see it happening. I think Sandy's got a great point here. Companies like Ford and GM have been sitting on their hands for over a decade when they should have been moving full speed ahead towards electrification. So what are their options now? How do they survive the transition to electric vehicles? He might be right. Acquiring companies and acquiring the technology they should have been but weren't developing themselves may be the only way to survive. In fact, let me know in the comments below, do you think Ford, GM, etc. will only be able to survive the transition to EVs by acquiring technology from other companies or do they have a chance of doing it alone? My guess is, based on what I see from GM, 
uh, there is at least some people who think that maybe there's a, there's a need or a want to get into the electric vehicle world. Um, uh, but, uh, but I will tell you, uh, I really think that moving at warp speed is what, what, uh, what Ford, at least Ford and GM need to do right now. I, I, I really think they've got to, they, they've got to get, they've got to unload some baggage. Um, and maybe it's time for some people to retire. Sandy is such a savage, but I completely agree. There are a lot, I mean a lot of people, especially in upper management, that should have been fired years ago. They do not know what the f they're doing. They're not competent in the roles that they're actually in. They're steering their ships towards an iceberg, and none of these people should have jobs. If you're not competent, you shouldn't be doing your job. If you're steering a ship towards an imminent iceberg and you're too stupid to even see there's a fucking iceberg directly in front of you, you shouldn't be working at these companies. Unfortunately, many, many, many hundreds and thousands of these folks are. This is a problem. They shouldn't be working there. They are. Their companies are probably going bankrupt. They need to go. And, um, and they really need to start looking at what are we going to do in order to make our shareholders happy? I mean, really, right now? If you add up all the uh, the wealth or, or or worth of all the rest of the car companies and compare it to Tesla, and it went up again today. I mean, remember, I I I'll, on your show I said I'm buying Tesla stock. I mean, this stuff is going to go to the moon. Sandy, did you just give me an amazing segue to once again plug the merch store and remind everybody watching if they don't already have their Tesla stock to the moon t-shirt or mug, they can pick one up with a link in the description. And by the way, thanks so much to everyone for supporting the merch store. Almost 800 of these t-shirts have been sold. I think that every time somebody buys a t-shirt, Tesla stock goes up by $1 per share. So if you guys want to help that stock keep going, buy some shirts. And, and somebody asked, I, I can't remember who, but that was the, the old stock. How far do you think it's going? Oh, two grand. It's going to go to a two grand a share. <laughs> and then they cut it in. I made so much. I made, I cannot begin to tell you how much money I have made on Tesla stock. In fact, I will. I started with $22,000 and I, I sold it a while ago because I, uh, I, I, I want to, I want to invest in another car company, but I sold that stuff for uh, for $170,000 from 22,000 to 107 where else are you going to if i had gm stock i don't know how much would i have made that's by the way from april 1st until about a week ago sandy sounds like a very happy tesla stock investor well ex stock investor not sure he'll be as happy in 2030 when he realizes the tesla stock went on to 10x from where he sold it at but hey hopefully this investment in a new ev company pays off for sandy I, uh, I think that uh, I think that people have to listen to the customer, right? And what's the customer saying? The customers are saying, if I'm going to buy stock, I'm going to buy that stock. If if I'm going to buy a car that's going to be an EV, I'm going to buy one of those. I'm I mean, uh, we better they better start listening and looking. And I'm telling you, they need to hire some different guys uh, for advice. That's a fact. That is the biggest thing that I think has gone wrong. They're listening to the wrong people. I listen to analysts and I go, are you an engineer? Well, no. Uh, uh, have you ever built a car? Well, uh, uh, no. But what did you do? Well, I, I've read a lot of magazines. Oh, Sandy, on an absolute roll here, just savaging and eviscerating the Wall Street analysts. But well deserved. I mean, most of these Muppets have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And I'm more of the opinion, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk, or at least preface this with, hey, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but here's what I think. At least that way there's an excuse when they're completely dead fucking wrong. They say, well, hey, I told you I didn't know what I'm talking about. When you're coming from a mantle where people have respect, you've got some authority, I'm a Wall Street analyst, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you don't know what you're talking about, you end up getting eviscerated by the likes of Sandy and this guy for being a fucking moron. Oh, that's hey, they're perfect. I mean, that's I, I, they, they, they know everything then. Yeah, that's uh, that's all you need to do, I guess. But anyway, I uh, I think that um, I think that uh, moving quickly is a good idea. That's my free consulting advice today. So let me. Here's another skill testing question. <clears throat> when Tesla first got going, myself included, I thought these guys are going to be out of business in a weekend. And um, I looked at the uh, the little uh, the little sports car, and I said, "Hmm, this looks a lot like a Lotus." And um, 
How did they stay alive? Certainly not by selling that thing. How did they do it? Because OEMs were willing to pay $25,000 per vehicle to get points. To get, the, to get the points so they could sell their normal cars in California. Now that's gone down a lot. Now it's only a few thousand, but, but they still are buying those credits. How, how long ago was it that, uh, that uh, they had the, um, you know, they had that, 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 uh, that, that little sports car out? A long time ago. And I would have guessed that that would have been something that would have said, hey, maybe there's something to this. How long did it take for the Pony Express to be out of business? One year. One day. The first telegraph that went from New York to, to Los Angeles and the guy that was in charge of the Pony Express knocked it down one day. That was it. When those Pony Express guys finally reached their destination with their Oh, we get we can get a letter across the United States in uh, like 17 days or something like that. When they got there, they said, "Oh, sorry, uh, you ran for nothing. We're we're not doing that anymore." One day, things can happen awfully fast. How how long was the electric vehicle uh, business? Uh, uh, how long did they last? Once uh, once gas stations and uh, and basically all the infrastructure that was needed. Then the big one again was Boss Kettering. He invented the uh, the electric starter. How long after that did the electric car companies uh, hang around? They had fifty percent of the market share, and it went to nothing, like nearly overnight. So, lots of things that uh, you know were very powerful at one time. Uh, empires, car companies, they vanished um, overnight. Things can happen quickly um, if you're not, if you don't have a backup plan. Nailed it once again. Most of these legacy automakers didn't have a plan B, and now the only B that's in their future is bankruptcy. I, I think with everything that you've been talking about, you know, especially the world going electric, where's where's that leave the aftermarket? If, but as he said, well, after, yeah, I think that there's always going to be an aftermarket. There's always going to be somebody that wants to, uh, you know, jazz up their product. It's going to be tough on a on a Tesla because um, it's it's you have to be a you have to be a rocket scientist to make uh, to make things work in this thing or change it around. These comments from Sandy should absolutely scare the pants off legacy automakers. The fact that you need to be a rocket scientist to do anything to modify a Tesla should make it pretty clear that their technological lead is light years ahead of everything else on the marketplace. Effectively, they have alien technology in their vehicles while everybody else, yeah, no problem. But you already knew that. Styling, though, I mean. We've all seen uh, people take uh, take vehicles, and um, I mean the top hat's a big nothing. In fact, um, I I'd like to, I'm going to try and talk uh, uh, a guy um, actually in New Zealand into uh, having us buy him a Model Three, rip off the top, and turn it into the product of his dreams. I, I think that I'd want the whole. Uh, I, I all I want to do is take the. Um, uh, take the uh, the skateboard and I just take everything except for the body. I, I you know, give that to Heave and um, and then drop uh, drop his new body on top. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think that Tesla may get into the market of just manufacturing a skateboard uh, and you do what you want, like Ford and General Motors and whatever. They do the same thing with big trucks. The idea of Tesla selling their skateboard battery, drivetrain, etc., to other automakers in the future is something that I've raised in the past. Now, I think this is a high probability outcome, but it won't happen until Tesla's own production can exceed their own needs. And I think what happens in the future, and the reason that I suggest this, is Tesla's lead is so far ahead of everyone else, and it's accelerating faster than anybody else. There's no catching them. If you're a legacy automaker facing imminent bankruptcy within five years unless you do something major, do you A, invest tens of billions of dollars, fire half of your workforce, try to find some new engineers, realize Tesla already hired them, just give up? Or do you go, hey Tesla, can you save us like tens of billions of dollars and a huge amount of pain by just letting us buy your skateboard and we'll just window dress it, make it look like one of our vehicles and give you a little bit of cash? Yeah, can we do that? Great. But as I say, I don't see this as a likely outcome until Tesla's production can far exceed their own needs. So I hope you guys have found this video insightful. Once again, there's a link to the full interview in the description below.
I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.